Ward. And what I want to say about Felicia is that as soon as I uh, agreed to co-curate the show with Elizabeth and Thea, the first thing I thought was that I wanted Felicia to be in it. I've been a fan of her writing for uh, the entire span of the trajectory that we're talking about, and I'm so excited that she's here today. Thank 
take me from the beginning of my days till now, and some uh, writers who made a difference to my life with just a quote from those writers. So uh, these the years will not line up perfectly, of course, but it, one of the things that's important to me as a woman is. I grew up, uh, I think one of the first interviews I remember seeing in the newspaper at about 10 years old was of the um, Asian nurses that had been murdered by, I think it's Richard Speck. And they had their photographs in little squares, almost as if it's you're in your a high school yearbook. And their lives had been taken by one man who had walked them out of a dorm room one by one while they waited for him to come back and the friends were not coming back. My mom talked about that story because she wanted to tell us we can survive such a thing as that. And I remember that one of those girls rolled under that bed, the bed to hide so that she wasn't found. And I always think of myself as that girl mm -hmm. who would think to roll under the bed to save her life. At this time, while I'm seeing these girls' faces on the front page of the newspaper, I'm reading Little Women by Louisa May Alcott over and over and over again. And this is just one quote from Joe, who of course, I was going to be Joe, <laughs> a writer. And uh, it says, Joe's ambition was to do something very splendid. What it was, she had no idea, and yet, but left it for time to tell. The next image I have is uh, those little girls uh, bombed uh, in Birmingham in that church. And I remember they had a photograph in the newspaper of one of the girls, her eyes are bandaged. And I began to read Anne Frank over and over again to ask the question about man's inhumanity of man, wanting to understand it. And Anne's quote that I always come back to is, I keep my ideals because in spite of everything, I still believe that people are really good at heart. I fell in love with Anne. I stared at her picture. I tried to write a diary of my own in which the first words in my diary were, I hate my mother. <laughs> Brown Miller wrote this book, um, uh, Women in 
you know what I did? I did my damn little book. Somebody knows. Women, Susan Brown Miller, the book about rape. And she says, a world without rape would be a world in which women would freely without fear of men. And I remember that my only job, and I thought it was the job my mother gave to me, was to not be raped. Mm -hmm. oh. Like, don't get raped. And when we got to college, guys would ask us, what would you do if someone raped you? It's as if it was the first question we're asked as, as, as co ed. And uh, we would practice screaming and what we would do and could we run. I was, I'd never screamed before. So, how would I exercise a scream? A woman who saved my life, I believe that my life did not start until I was 30 years old. And at 30 years old, into a shot shotgun wrote for colored girls, and for, in my age, for colored girls who considered suicide on a regular enough. And the one quote I have from her is, ever since I realized there was someone called a colored girl, an evil woman, a bitch, or a nag, I've been trying not to be that and leave bitterness in somebody else's cup. I had convinced myself that colored girls have no right to sorrow. I was lucky enough to uh, get invited to a conference on black women's health, the National Black Women's Health Project held a conference on black women's health. And at that conference, uh, there was a woman, Lily Allen. These are names that you won't know. Billy Avery, who started this organization. Uh, Lily Allen went on to train hundreds of women to do one thing we had never been permitted to do as black women, which is to grieve and to cry mm -hmm. and to say our pain. It was the first place in my life I'd ever been held by a woman. My mom, I know, because I had my little sister, who never comforted us. But often I think, is the reason that I never saw affection and love publicly between uh, a black mother and children is because they could not show that affection. They could not show that this was someone they cared about because that would be someone who would be taken away from them that would be sold in that legacy. I'm, I'm speeding up because I only have two minutes. It's going to be a long two minutes. But it's <laughs> <laughs> the other leaps for me in the words is Alice Walker's book when, when Seeley says, I, 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 was, I am a good girl. And, you know, I come to this end of this time and I have to, I'll uh, say this about Elizabeth, which is, I was 42 years old before I claimed my writing so that I could have something that belonged to me. And this does t dovetail with becoming a woman and acknowledging myself as a lesbian. So I'm 42, she's 25, and she says to me something like, you know, a lot of you old women think of being a lesbian like being in a support group. It's <laughs> 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 not a support group. It's about sex. <laughs> American women saved mostly at a, a Jewish lesbian woman, Elizabeth Stark, who these young people told me, look, you, you just, you have no idea. It changed my entire life in which I became a, I'm a femme. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. I never felt sexual attraction when I was around my friends. They were all femmes. <laughs> that I have lived, in which I have accomplished many yeah. things, but I want you to tell me that my really only goal is to have an orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of years. <laughs> but I 